You know, <clears throat> I may be discredited for my current use of Black & Decker tools, all right, because they're not real tools. They're practically reps, okay? But let me tell you what, at least I install most of my shit right, okay? My stuff breaks constantly because I build things that just don't take modification well, okay? It smells like gas in here still. But hey, it's true. You can typically install car parts the right way or the fast way. And typically the fast way ends with Hey guys, Chris Fix here. At the end of this winch cable is a car I just got for 500 and while we love Chris, truly, we don't want to be at that point at two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday night when we have to go to work at Monday morning because this is the car that we modify that we also have to drive to work. I'm Alex, Alex.Martini with two underscores at the end of it. And today we're going to be talking about a few tips and tricks to install car parts the right way versus the Ugga Dugga way, which this, some of this is not actually that hard, but a lot of people forget about this. And let me just tell you, I could have saved myself almost decades and I'm 27. Now, before we get into it, I want to hear your greatest horror story in selling car parts in the comment section below. I respond to almost every single comment right now and it would mean a lot if you did that. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. We have a new site which is live and I've got one thing for sale right now. It's a handmade bag from Porsche Racing Seat Material. It's a collaboration with Obsessed Worldwide. It's cool, it's out there, it's different. There's only 25 of them. But if you're interested, you can check that out over at alexmartini.net. And if nothing else, don't forget to subscribe or the next bolt that seizes will be my ghost staring over you, judging you. And the next drop, if you're interested, is a little homage to the early 2000s gamer and all of us. It's gonna be awesome, I'm very excited, okay? So let's talk about car part installation. It smells like gas in here still. Now let's talk about car part installation where we most, almost always, 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 always screw the pooch, okay? The easiest way to learn is just to do it on your friend's car first, you know? Tomato, potato, just do it on his car. And if it messes up, it's not your car. I'm kidding. Unless, you know. Usually the first modifications I have for car parts and cars that we buy are almost always gonna be aesthetic. We say we're maintenance, but really we need to do some aesthetic stuff. And that's okay every once in a while. It's okay to wanna to put a little makeup on that 2008 Subaru STI. It's been around for 14 years. It's a little bit ugly, it's a little bit faded, and it needs some 2022 trends. We get it. And 14 years of being driven by people that think US 10 is WRC, it's gonna do a little bit of pain. So you're gonna go and do what's right. You're gonna do a little headlight change up, maybe some taillights, some LEDs, some interior light components, maybe some underglow, right? And as you enter the process of disconnecting the wires that make those beautiful bulbs turn on and off, you're giving yourself the question every single time you see those clips. What's gonna give out first, your nails or the plastic clip that's like coated in mud because Chad decided to take his STI off-road in 2013 and then never washed it ever again. Stop right there, go on Amazon, and buy the damn tool that's built to disconnect those things, all right? There's nothing worse than dealing with fragile plastic connectors that exist on every car, on every platform ever built, but they're everywhere, and they almost always break. They're the first things to break when you're modifying a car. Any aftermarket headlights have broken tabs almost every time, particularly when it's your first modification. But there are terminal remover keys and extractors that apply to almost every vehicle imaginable that you can buy for like 20 bucks. I still have the radio keys that I have for my B7 A4 that I use on a Ferrari F430 and it's the same thing. Just trust me, it's worth it. And I love Chris Fix, but it is such a painful moment to be sitting there under the car waiting for him to calmly explain why you're an idiot when gapping, you know, any sort of electrical work and you're looking at it and you're like huh i'm so glad i broke the connector but at least chris has a calming voice so this is nice things can get a little flippy floppy all right now if you're a sophisticated individual you might find yourself doing maintenance items instead of putting flashy lights on your car you want to know what you're better than everyone else. You should be proud of yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back. Now surprising, I know, but some people do want to get rid of the check engine light on their BMW, which does seem to be the minority these days. But if you're working on a thermostat or an OEM clamp or connecting pieces, lifters or bishings or even hose kits, there are pieces that can go in 100% upside down that you will never notice or even slightly off place and cause a huge mess, all right? Mostly because, again, you're rushing and you're trying to just put everything together because you want your pipes to be blue instead of black. I don't know what to tell you. The thermostat has gotta be, though, the number one piece that almost always gets installed upside down on certain models when it's your first time jumping in. Oh, yeah. Well, for one thing, the thermostat was installed backwards. How about that? Mm. I did it with my small block Chevy. And anytime you're going through preventative maintenance, I would highly recommend snagging something like a Hanes repair manual or something similar. 
Yes, it's a book. You can put it on a tablet if you want, all right? You can be new and cool, but get something like that. It has pages, it has illustrations. A lot of times those repair manuals have tons of guides and are practically a mechanic right next to you and they have everything you need to know to not fuck up your bushings when you're throwing them back in your SN95, which is something that you want to know. When you learn it right the first time, you don't have to relearn it the second time because you messed it up the first time. Now, speaking of putting things back together, I'd argue one of the most common pieces to take apart and reuse some of the same pieces and then put the aftermarket pieces back together as part of the OEM pieces is an exhaust. Being or at any point you're looking for a 10 mil you just lost and you think to yourself, eh, by nature, when you apply substantial pressure to one piece out of the hole where the rest of the assembly isn't in its intended position just yet, you're gonna end up having a bad time and everything's gonna be really wonky. You need to put down the depressed TikTok gym videos and put on some AJR, okay, and some happy music. Because anytime you do this, you should go for hand tightening the bolts first, assembling it all, making sure she's all good to go, then go back through a second time and torque the spec. Once the assembly is done and you do the necessary torque specs for whatever you're installing, you're then gonna wanna make sure that the bolts and washers that you're putting back on the car are also good to use and can handle that new torque spec. Sometimes there are pressure washers that can only be used once. You need to go get another one. I know it sucks, but you're gonna need to have to. So check that stuff out. Sometimes, just sometimes, you can't ug a dug of the shit out of that 22 year old bolt. Either these bolts are gonna strip, these screws are gonna strip, or they're gonna come out. Okay, you might as well buy a tap and die set when you're getting bolts anyway, and it can act as like a nice little oversight if you get a little bit impatient, because if you've ever seen a tap and die set or you've used one, just set it out next to you. And anytime you're getting impatient, just look at that, because you're gonna use it if you lose your, you know, patience. And impatience across the board is kind of like a, thing that happens, but the impatience is real. Most people like me end up in a garage the night before a show or night before a track trying to rush to get ready because we have little control over time management and ultimately end up in a disaster. But because we have friends or a loved one that understands we have the multitasking ability of a four-year-old, they help us and that's real. But if you don't have these people around, you may end up installing a window regulator and putting it all back together because you just want it to be done only to finally align the last bolt and the next day you're driving down and you open up the window because you wanna get some fresh air because it's springtime and it's 50 degrees and you go and press the button and the driver's side glass just falls all the way to the bottom and you hear the worst sound next to styrofoam. It is a real thing and I've done it too. Anytime you're disassembling or reassembling, test the thing you're looking to work on before you put it all back together, before you all compile the pieces that make a car a car, just make sure the window regulator works. Make sure the things that you're actually going to fix are fixed. It's kind of like when you work on speakers you want to test the speaker before you put all the stuff around it back on. Every time that you're looking to do that, do it. Sure, it's ugly and it takes time, but it's like insurance for when you're working on your car and it's definitely necessary on project cars. Another place that I see this is with the handling of carbon fiber, which can be the ultimate pain in the ass. People constantly have to drill carbon because most carbon pieces don't come pre-drilled. It's like normal, but if you don't prep the carbon by doing the three by three tape method and have patience as you gradually increase the drill bit size before tapping it for proper installation, you're also gonna have a bad time. A lot of times they just throw a six mil millimeter on that black and decker and apply as much pressure to the carbon as they possibly can and then just pray the very next morning because it ends up cracked that Saibon will accept it without you know getting upset or angry asking for further questions they just want the return I did some good mother holes. Installing car parts the wrong way happens literally all the time. You see it in Formula One, NASCAR, WRC, and your friend's garage that's five white claws deep and happens. But if you can try to remember the few things above, it might just make you hate life a little bit less on those cold garage dates with a 25 year old box. But what's one thing you learned the hard way? Let me know below. And of course, as I replied to almost every damn comment, and if you could, I just wanna say thank you. The outpour of support has been so awesome ever since my decision, so thank you so much. It means a lot. If you wanna drop a video idea, you can do that too. I'm Alex.Martini with two underscores at the end. If you wanna check out the site at alexmartini.net for the single bag that we have out there, or you can sign up for the email list to get the next drop, please do so. It's super awesome. We will guys see you. Oh. We will see you later. Peace. Peace, 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 bye. Ha!